Hello and welcome to our second video on our Food Advisor migration walkthrough journey. If you haven't seen the first video, I'll make sure to put it up here somewhere so you can check it out. So in this video, we're going to pick up where the last one ended. But before we do that, let's take a look at our general migration guide outline and talk about. But before we jump into it, let's take a look at our migration outline just to know where we are. So currently we're starting starting with our V3 project that we're looking to migrate to V4. Before running code mods though, we want to make sure that we update our project to at least to 3.6.9 before running code mods. So let's do that first. In my terminal, the first thing I'm going to do, because you pull this from my repo, let's create our own. Let's run rm-rf.git to delete the previous repo and let's run git in it. What we're going to do, we're going to save it by running git commit with a message and we're going to say before update. Now, usually you're going to do this in a separate branch, make sure that it works and then merge the changes. I'm going to skip that step, but I did say it, at least in this case. And did I forget to do git add? Probably I did. Make sure you git add first, git commit before update. And now let's open our code editor and take a look. So currently, if we look at our package.json file, we see that we're working with Strapi 3.5.0. Let's select it, find all the references to it, and make sure you enter the correct value that you want to migrate to. This is my second time doing it. As you can see by mistake, it's not 3.5.9, it's 3.6.9. Boy, do I love re-recording videos. So let's make the update. Everything looks good here. Here, let's switch and just for your benefit, make sure that you know that you're in the correct version of Node. I'm using 14.19.0, which is great. So now let's remove all of the old Node modules and let's go ahead, install the new dependencies and update our application. Once everything's all set, let's run yarn build just in case and then we will run yarn develop to test our application. Let's run yarn develop to start our application and do a small sanity check to make sure it works. So now we're running a new version, Strapi 3.6.9. It does say we could upgrade to 3.6.10. That is true. And that was a security patch that we did. But in this, I'm just using the minimum version, which should at least be 3.6.9. So let's go into our application, make sure we could still log in. Monkey one, two, three, four. Beautiful. It still works. We updated our version to bring it up to date before running code mods. We still have all our data. So now we're going to focus on doing the next step. But before we do that, let's look at our trusty diagram. So we're going to focus on running code mods. So I want to preface that you always want to point to a new database because the way migration works in both both cases, if you point to your production database, he will delete it once you run the migration. So please don't use production database. Make sure you have plenty of backups. But in the next step, we're going to use code mods to migrate our content types, folder structure, dependencies, everything except the custom code because custom code is custom. We have to do that manually, but at least our application will build, which will give us an easier time to start moving our customizations piece by piece. And let's look at the documentation if you search for migrations, you will get to this section, click migration guides, and you will see all the different guides available to you. In our case, because we're focusing on code migration, that's what we're going to be working on. And as you could see, it's going to cover all the topics. By running code mods, majority of this will be done for us, except the custom code. So all the configuration, dependencies, files, controls, and services, and so on will be done, which is pretty pretty awesome. In the next step, let's prepare to run code mods. So let's stop our server. And the first thing I want to do, I want to save my current changes that we made. And before we do even that, that reminds me, let's go in our code because we're using SQLite, just because it's easier for the demonstration. That way I don't have to spin up a Postgres database. But the difference literally is going to be the way you point to things 
things in your configuration, but we're using SQLite for simplicity. So here we have our data that has our database already. So make sure that you make a copy, back it up, whichever database you use. But in our case, I'm just going to call this ODB data, click enter, and I'm going to initialize a dummy database by running yarn develop. Once this completes, we don't have to create a new user, but more importantly, as you could see here, we have our old database, which has all of our items. And then we have a new dummy DB that's empty, which is perfect. We just want to make sure that we don't override. And then finally, let's go to our previous step, stop the server, get add, get commit message. And we're going to say before code mods. Perfect. And now we're going to do get status just to make sure we got everything. Fantastic. Now let's create a new branch by running get branch and we're going to call this migrate. Let's check out that branch by typing git check out migrate and we're ready to go. We're now ready to run code mods. So I'm going to paste the link in the repo before how to find it, but you could go to strappy.com slash strappy slash code mods. It will show you basic documentation, how to run the command. And this is also something I'm going to do in this video, of course. You're going to go ahead and copy this command npx strappy dash code mods migrate let's go to our terminal make sure we're in the correct branch you must set up a new clean branch before running code mods that's why um, in our migrate branch let's go ahead clear the screen let's paste that command and it's going to go ahead and do its magic. Once you see the menu, go ahead and select application. We want to enter path of our strap application, which is our root path. Click enter. And it's going to go ahead and do what it is supposed to do. You could see all the changes that it created by running this command. So let's go ahead and try it. And here we are. You could scroll down. You could see files edit, files deleted, files change which is fantastic once we finish running code mods the next following step we have to do is to remove our cache folder then remove our temporary database and make sure that you remove your yarn lock file. Sometimes when you run into issues, it could be because of those three things. So in my terminal and also don't forget to remove the node modules because we're going to install new ones. So let's do RM RF node modules first. Next, let's do RM RF dot cache to remove the cache folder now let's do rm we don't want to remove all of them dot temp and let's remove our old v3 data db file and lastly let's do rm yarn dot lock to remove the lock file there's one more thing that I want to point it out and you will have issues with SQLite 3 if you're using newer node version. So if we take a look at our package.json file, we could see here that we are currently using SQLite 3 version 5.0. Dot 11. But on some computers, this will cause issues. So we recommend switching to better SQL Lite 3. And we could find it by searching better SQL Lite 3 and checking out what is the latest version. We're going to use 7.6.2. So let's go ahead and make that appropriate change. And this is something where I had issues because I run an ARM based Mac and SQL Lite 3 wasn't really working and throwing errors. So if you have having similar issues, make sure that you are using better SQLite 3. And finally, the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's run yarn. The issue it's giving us because we are migrated our application to v4, we need to make sure that we use supported node version. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to NVM U16. I'm glad that that reminded me to do so. Now let's run yarn. It's going to go ahead and install our new dependencies and packages. Now let's run yarn build. And finally, let's run yarn develop. Now in our current application, this is one thing that I forgot. We are referencing the old strappy utils, which now is included in our core code. So we want to make sure and make this change. This is an easy fix. Let's go ahead and do so now. 
So this is happening in our universal config schema graphql.js file. So let's go ahead and find it. So in source API, let's go ahead to universal config schema graphql. And if you take a look here, this should be at strappy slash utils. That is where our current package resides. So now if we run the yarn develop, now we have a different error where inside our restaurants, we using improper characters for our enums. So value should at least have one alphabetical character preceding the first occurrence of a number. And I'll show you where that error is. It's in restaurants, inside content types, schema. If we scroll down, we see here that we have our enums that have a number. So what we wanna do is we wanna update this. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the previous changes. And instead of a number, we're going to write it out. First, second, third, fourth. And this is why I love GitHub Copilot because doing stuff like this manually is just boring. So let's go ahead and make sure we fix this. And this is a great example of some of the little issues you might run into in your particular project, which you would have to troubleshoot and handle. And the reason why I'm saying this and showing this to you is that any migration that you do is dependent based on your particular project and your customizations that you have done in the past. So now this is fixed. Let's try again, running Yarn Develop and see what happens. And beautiful. Look at here, we are now running Strappy v4. Before we finish this video, let's quickly create our admin user and monkey1234. Let's start and boom, we're inside our application. We have all of our content types available. And here's the amazing thing. Even though we haven't moved our customizations, if we take a look in the code and I'll show you a quick example here. If I go in the V4 project, I go to API restaurants where we know we used to have a custom controller. We take a look. Currently, we have the standard controller, which is awesome because this allows us to build our application. And now when we're ready, we could make those changes manually. And all of our old code is saved in the V3 project for reference. So I could take a look here in restaurants. We have our custom controller that we will have to go ahead and customize to fit the Strappy V4 format. The cool thing is now that we're running Strappy V4, you could reference not only this migration guide, but you could also reference our V4 for documentation. So if I type backend customization and everything that I see here, for instance, how to set up custom routes and so on, or if I take a look at how to create middleware and customize, this is now applicable documentation in our current project because we're now running Strappy version four. So in the next video, we're going to take a look how to customize our custom controllers, and then we're going to move through our services, middleware, talk about routes and GraphQL to give you an idea of how to change all of those items in your code. But before we end, go ahead and make sure to stop the server and save all the recent changes. I'm going to run git commit message after code mods. Perfect. And to finish up, let's review what we did. The first thing we did, we brought our Strappy V3 project up to date with the latest V3. So we migrated from 3.5.0 to 3.6.9, which is the least recommended version before you run code mods. Then we went ahead and ran code mods to make sure that we migrate majority of our code, including our content types and the folder structures, all the generic controls services and routes to make sure that our application built. We now have a V4 project and the last two steps that we have left is to migrate our custom code, which where we could now reference our V4 documentation and also migrate our database, which we'll do in next following videos. And in the next video, we're going to start migrating custom controllers. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. And before you go, 
obviously, if you haven't smashed the like button, smash the like button. I guess that's what all the YouTubers say these days. But we have a Discord channel. If you're not on Discord, go ahead and join because we have a great channel specifically for Strappy with three to before migrations. And we also have a monthly event every third week of every month where we talk about Strappy development best practices, where we dive deep into the code base and you have opportunity to ask questions. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.